Welcome back aliens, my name is Navin Reddy and welcome to the series on Java project with MongoDB. So basically we are trying to create a project using Spring Boot and MongoDB. In the previous video we were able to do some configuration but if you have not seen that, that's completely fine because in this video we'll focus on two important features of MongoDB. The first one is the MongoDB compass and the second one is MongoDB Atlas search. That's right, search. Because remember in the first video, if you have seen it, so basically we were able to search the data from the document and irrespective where that data is. Is it a key or in the values? Okay, somewhere in the description, there was something mentioned it was able to search. Search for every text, not just the title, okay? So let's try to implement that. So how will you get the compass? So there should be an option here. Otherwise, what I can do is I can just go to Google and search for Search for MongoDB Compass and this is the website. In fact, you can directly click on download, but let me just go through the website first. So this is how the MongoDB Compass website looks like. So this is a GUI for MongoDB, that's right. So basically you can access the MongoDB Atlas from the browser. In fact, you know, we have multiple options. You can use MongoDB on your uh, local machine. When you do that, basically you have to use the console and you have to type a lot of commands. And if it, of course, as a programmer, it's a good thing. But if you want to use a GUI tool, you can use Compass for that as well, which connects with the local system. Or you can use Compass to connect with the cloud as well. You have a choice. So this act as a GUI for both. And for this example, we're going to use Compass for the cloud. So you can click on download now, it will download and it's a straightforward setup. You can just click, click next, next, next. Uh, nothing difficult. It's just that you have to specify which version of Compass you want to download, uh, which platform you're using and what format you want to download. So click on download, it will give you the setup. Now, once you click on the setup, once you click on next and install, it's very easy. Uh, nothing fancy there. The only thing is when you open MongoDB Compass, you need to do some configuration. That's it, when you open it. And I'm just, I have just clicked on it. It, may, it might take some time. So this is how your MongoDB Compass will look like. And you can see it will ask you for the connection. Now, MongoDB Compass is not sure. Do you want to connect with the local machine or from the cloud? Now, based on that, if it is a local address, this is the port number, you can click on connect. But I think in my machine, I don't have a local setup. You can see connection refuse. I don't have the local setup. But what I have is I have a cloud. And to connect the cloud, you have to enter the URI. Oh, from where you will get the URI? Remember, in the project, we have done that. But if you have not following the project, that's completely fine. When you open your, uh, let me just start from the cloud itself. So when you go to the MongoDB Atlas and when you have your database here, you can click on connect. And when you click on that, you, you can see we have multiple options. But this time we are going for the MongoDB Compass. And the beauty is they have both have the same URL. So we click on this and I will say, uh, yes, I have MongoDB Compass. And the version is this and later. This is the URI. So just copy this. And for my database, I have a user name, which is root. And the password is also root. So I will replace that with, with this. So here, I just have to replace this part with root. That's it. And click on connect. I hope it will be connected. Oh, it is, you have to also mention the database, right? Why well, just giving test database? I want my database. It should be the disco. Let's try. So click on connect and it says connecting. Oh, it connected. Can you see that? You got your host and that's the beauty of MongoDB. So every time you create a database, it will create multiple replicas of it. Of course, we have to be fail safe, right? What if you have only one server and that goes down? You need a backup servers. So MongoDB for every database, it creates two extra copies for you. We call them as replica set. So in total, you have three working databases at the same time. And you can see that is what you can see here on the left hand side. If I click on databases here, it will show all the database which we have created and we have created only one Telisco, it was by default. And if I click on Telisco database, you can see it is giving you option of the collection, which is drop post. If I click on this, we got all our records. So it's better to use the GUI than using cloud. Uh, the only drawback which I can see is if your machine is slow, Compass will give you issue. That time you can use cloud but it's not that heavy, normal machine can take it up. So again, it's depending upon the developers what they want to use. I normally prefer to use the cloud service. Some people prefer to use the GUI tool to do everything or the desktop application. But again, that's, that is preferred, depending upon the people. 
Okay, now this is the first thing I wanted to show. The next thing is I want to implement the search feature and this is the beauty about Atlas search. So in the MongoDB, uh, the Atlas, we use something called a search option. Remember whenever, whenever we work with data and we have created a database, right? And normally we only had around 12, 13 records or 11 records. In normal databases, which is production grade, we have thousands of records. Oh, that's less. We have millions of records. Now, if you want to search for a single word from all the records, trust me, it's very time consuming. So basically as a user of that application, when you type, you have to wait for minutes to get the output. And we don't have that much of time, right? So how will you speed it up? And that's where in the database concept, we have something called indexing. So every field, every text will be indexed so that it will be easier for search. Okay, but then how will you do that? Do you have, as a developer, do you have to do everything? Uh, not exactly. If you can see, the, day, the same option is there in the, on the cloud as well. Okay, so you can click on this index and you can create index from here. But since I, as I mentioned before, I'm a big fan of cloud. So I will be doing that from the cloud itself. So let me go back to the cloud service. And if I go back here, okay. So I will click on my collections. There is an option of creating a search index. So if I click on this index, okay, this is where you can create your index. So it says, make your data more discoverable with Atlas search. And I can create the index here. The only thing is when you're creating the index, it will give you two options, visual and JSON. I'm a newbie to this. So I will click on visual. That's what you do, right? When you learn something new, you go with the basic steps. Keep it simple, learn the first layer. And I always believe in the uh, learning where we have onion uh, peel, like learning, right? We have different layers. So you learn the basics and then you learn the advanced part then you learn the more advanced part. So I'll click on next. It will ask me for the index name. By default, the name will be default. Keep it that as it is, you can change it, but let's keep it default. And you can mention what database and collection you want to index. I want to, I want to index the job post. If you have multiple databases and collection, it will show you the options. You can choose one and click on next. And that's done. Oh, we have to click on this create search index. Now, before I do that, in fact, let me just do that. And I will show you something. This interesting thing called index fields. There's an option of dynamic. So what happens is, by default, it will index, it will try to index everything from your database or everything from the from the collections. It's good, but then if you have a huge database and if you have huge number of documents, it is very time consuming because it will it will take a lot of time. Second, it will consume a lot of memory. And sometimes you don't want to do that. Why you will not do that? Because what if you have multiple fields? Let's say we have eight or ten fields in the document. And not everything needs to be indexed. Maybe you can specify these are the three, three fields which I want to index. Example, in our case, maybe I want to index description. I want to index the profile. That's it. I don't want to index other things. I can specify that with the static mapping. By default, it's dynamic. It will map everything. I can also make it static. Now, even for 11 records, it is taking so much of time. Maybe it is done. I'm not sure. Let, let me just refresh this. So you can see we got only 11 records and it is working now. So the mapping is dynamic mapping here. And if I, yeah, that, that's done. So indexing is done now. Let me just go back to my collections. So that's the first thing. If you want to apply the search, you have to first create the index. And now using that index, you can actually test it. Uh, so, okay, how do I test? Uh, let me just go back to search. There should be an option of testing as well. Click on visual editor. Okay, so if I click on visual editor, you can see we have an option of search tester. It is indexed, right? You should be able to search now. Example, let's say I'm searching based on Java. So if I see Java and if I click on search, it will show all the documents where Java is mentioned in the profile, in the description or in the technologies. Example, in the blockchain developer, we don't have Java mentioned in the profile and in the experience, in the description, but it is mentioned in the technologies. If you can expand this, you can see we have a Java here. So basically everything is indexed. It is easier to search and you can use the search from the, from the client side. But you will say, hey, that works, right? I mean, this is working from the cloud. What if I want to do that from the Java code? Uh, that's tricky, right? How will you do that? Let me show you how to do that. So if I go back to the collections and if I click on aggregation, can you see that we have an option of aggregation? Now this is where you can create a pipeline, what you want to search. And you, it's not like you, you can search only one thing. Maybe I want to search based on Java and even for Java, let's say we have 50 records. So let's say in total we have 200 records. And if I specify Java, it is giving me only, it, it will, it is going, giving me, let's say, 
50 records. Now, out of 50 records, I only want five, and that too in the sorted order of experience. Can we do that? So basically, you can see I've applied three filters, the keyword, Java. Second, I want to sort it, and I also want to limit the number of uh, posts which I can see. So we can do that from the aggregation. Uh, so if I click on aggregation here, it's taking some time for the aggregation builder. So if it don't apply any filter, it will show all the posts. So in total, how many posts we have? Uh, so we can see we have 11 documents here. But then if I want to apply a filter, I can do that by, from here. So you can see we have an option of stage. By default, it will give, it will show you one stage. I will click on select. Now you can, you can basically apply multiple operators here. The first operator which I want to use is search. So if I scroll down, you can see we have an option of search. And this is what it will give you. So I will just remove this extra things from here. Now index, what index we have? Remember when we created the index, we have to also mention the index, okay? So if index has not specified or not created, this will not work. So you can specify the default, but even if you don't mention, that's fine. Since it is, we have a default index, we don't have a different name. So you can skip this part. Next, you can specify the query, what you're searching. So basically I'm searching for Java in description. Or maybe I can specify in text. Now you can see it will only it is only giving you eight documents. So out of eleven documents, it is giving you eight documents here, which has Java in it. Okay, that makes that makes sense. Now you will say, what if I don't want to just search Java in text? Let's say I want to do I want to search for Java in uh, description, profile, everywhere. So what you can do is you can make this as a list. So we can say list of text, comma. Maybe I want to search in description. Maybe I want to search in profile. So basically we are searching for Java in everywhere. And also we can, we only got eight documents, which is there. So you can see we got Java in profile. Uh, we got Java in profile, okay. We got Java in technologies this time, right? And we got Java in, um, we have Java here. So basically this is how you get it. This is how you apply search. What if you want to apply a sorting on this? How I want to sort this, I want to sort this based on the experience. You can see we got experience 10, we got experience five. I want to sort in ascending order. So what you can do is you can apply a stage here. That's what aggregation is, pipeline, right? The first search, then sort it, then limit it. So we can expand this and I want to sort. So we can just scroll down here and you can see we have an option of sort. Now it will ask based on what field you want to sort. I want to sort based on experience and sorting order. So if you say one, it is ascending, minus one is descending, if I'm not wrong, yeah. So one is ascending. So you can see the experience, we got experience here. The first profile has experience one, second profile experience two, it is working. You can see that we got experience five, experience 10, and then list goes on. It, it keeps increasing, right? So the sorting is also done, and that's eight documents. But I don't want eight documents, I only want five documents. Again, I can apply a stage, and this time I want to do it for, I want to limit, right? So limit should be there, yeah, limit is here. And it says how many documents you need. It's mention the number, I will say five. And that's it, you can see here it is loading, sample five documents, and we only got five documents. It's that beautiful, right? And yeah, you got your pipeline. Now you will say, okay, that the pipeline is done here itself. What if I want to do that from the code? We still are, we have this, we have still not done that, right? Okay, that's one thing. We'll do that, okay? In the next video, we'll try to implement this feature in the Java code. But before that, I want to mention one more feature of MongoDB. Now, MongoDB Atlas has one more feature, which is client-side field encryption. Now, what it means? Example, let's say you have a client application where user is submitting data. Now, it can be your name, it can be your age, it can be your email ID. That, that works if, if anyone can see that. Even, I don't think email ID should be shown. Email ID, SSN, maybe there are some sensitive information. So you have a bunch of data with you and some of the data is public, is okay for you, but I want to encrypt some of the fields, maybe email ID, SSN number, or whatever fields we have. How will I do that? I, what I want is from the client side, the moment your data goes on the public database, of course, right? In MongoDB behind the scenes, it is using AWS, Azure, GCP, which is a public cloud. I don't want to compromise my data based on their security. How about encrypting the data and sending it there? So basically it provides you something called field encryption where you can specify which field you want to encrypt. 
from the server side, okay, let's say this is your server, that's your database. The moment you send your data from server to database, it will get encrypted, okay? So the what you save in the database is encrypted. But what if you want to get data back? When you fetch data from database, it will be coming in encrypted format itself. But the moment it, it is received on the server, where you have your driver, it will get decrypted. Okay, so basically you don't have to do that encryption decryption. Uh, Atlas will take care of it. Of course, we're not going to do that in this course because that's a way out of the curriculum, but yeah, we can do that. Again, try that. There's some uh, amazing documentation available. I will try to put that link in description as well. Otherwise you can search for client side field encryption using MongoDB and you will get the documentation. Okay, so that's about this video and we have imp we have seen what is MongoDB Compass. We have seen how do we build Atlas search using the UI, but I want to do this searching. I want to get this data from the Java code. And uh, let's see that in the next video. Bye-bye everyone.